All right. Well, last week, if you haven't noticed, Adobe has released some new things or options inside of the photography programs. And today we're specifically going to be talking about Adobe Lightroom Classic, Adobe Photoshop, and Adobe Camera Raw. Now, in this video, I'm gonna be demonstrating this in Adobe Camera Raw. The Lightroom version in the develop module is gonna be exactly the same because they're both the same programs. Yes, they look a little bit different, but if you wanna use the remove tool in Lightroom, it's gonna be exactly the same as we see here in Adobe Camera Raw. So I've launched this raw file that we see right here into Adobe Camera Raw. And what's new is the remove tool and it's using AI and people are obsessed with this. You'll see, oh my God, it's a game changing effect. Well, it's not game changing. And then they go into the video and they have a picture like this of this person and they'll select the person and it completely removes them. Well, who in the world takes a picture and then wants to completely remove the person after the fact? Usually it's a mistake that you wanna remove something or someone, and it's usually a small area. So it's just not logical. It's cool, it does an awesome job. It's way better than the other tools. However, it's not game changing because I don't think you're gonna use it much. And I would suggest you use the remove tool in Photoshop, not Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw because you can make it non-destructive. Basically, you can create your own layer, remove it, and if you need to add it back, you just uncheck the eye and voila, it's back again. So today I'm gonna first show you how to use the remove tool. And so if we come on in here to Photoshop, you'll notice the remove tool is selected right there and I'm gonna go ahead and click on it. So that first tool is the old clone stamp tool. And basically you would just come in here and go over an area and then it's saying, hey, do you wanna replace this area with this? And you would be like, oh no, I wanna replace it with this right here. And that replaces it. Um, I'm gonna hit Command Z to undo that. We have the healing brush, which uses content aware. So you do the same thing. It's basically doing Instead of a cloned copy, it's looking at the areas around it and it's replacing it. So the last option is the remove tool that you see right here. And you can see underneath it, it's in early access. So it just started, it's probably gonna get better, but it still works really good right now. We wanna use generative AI. This is to control your brush size and the opacity of the image. So we have show overlay, which shows you a little red, so you know where you've selected. And it works really simply, all right? So I'm gonna adjust my brush size. I'm using my mouse scroll wheel, and I wanna be just a little bit bigger, and we're gonna select an area, because we don't want this bright light. We can see where it's selected, that's that overlay. If you need to add or subtract to this selection, so if I wanted to do this one too, I could click add, could go over here and do this one as well. And now it's gonna remove this and this. I click apply. So this uses AI, it's going off site to get its information. So having a fast internet speed is helpful. And you can see just like that, it looks pretty good. Now you get these annoying icons, just click off that and boom, just like that. Those items are gone and it does a really good job. We can remove this large one here so I can click on it again. I'm gonna make my brush a little bit bigger. I'm going to do a shift click, so it's left click at the beginning, one, because this is hard to draw a straight line across, and then I'm gonna hold shift and click at the end spot, and boom, it draws a straight line, but we need a little more, so we'll add it. So we've got our selection there. I can hit apply. It's gonna run through like it did before. It's gonna analyze it. It's gonna fix it. If it doesn't do a good job on this, just hit Command Z, undo it, and do it again. Look and look at this, off it, looks good, wonderful. Now, I'm gonna hit Option and reset this because I want these all back. So that's the Remove tool and how it works. However, the first thing I'm gonna show you inside of Photoshop is how to do the exact same thing in Photoshop that makes a lot more sense. So I'm gonna hit Open, all right? Now look, you should normally adjust your color and make minor adjustments in Adobe Camera Raw but we wanna save time, right? People don't like to sit around here and listen to me babble even though I do it. All right, so we've got the same image, the same issues. 
First thing we're gonna do is come on over here to this plus that we see, and we're gonna click that plus, and that's gonna give us a new blank layer. So the next step is to come on up here. Now remember I have a custom toolbar. This little band-aid here with the stars is your remove tool. So we're gonna select that. When you select it and you're using a blank layer, you must have sample all layers selected because if you don't, you're gonna sample nothing and it's gonna give you nothing. So you need to sample all the layers. Now, just like before, I'm gonna size my brush. I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna paint across it. It's gonna go ahead and analyze that and it's gonna remove it perfectly. However, it's on its own layer. So if I want it back, I just click it on, click it off. So what in the world then is new in Photoshop? So in Photoshop, we got this thing called the adjustment brush. And I have to say, it's a cool little new tool. And I think it's gonna make it really easy for people learning how to work with adjustment layers. It's gonna be easier and it's more intuitive than the old process. So the old process was usually using the brush or making a selection. A selective adjustment is just a certain location. So let's go ahead, I'm just gonna flatten this image just to make this simple so people don't get confused. So the old way to do a selective adjustment was really simple, okay? We would come down here and hit select subject, anywhere and hit select subject. It makes a selection. And then you come over here to adjustments and you could either click the adjustment here in your layers here, or you could go layer, new adjustment layer and pick one of these. All right, I just would do it here. So let's hit pick curves just to make this simple. So I pick curves, it makes the selection, all right? We could refine that selection and select and mask. So I'm gonna hit Command Z and undo that. You could also have done the same thing where you click the curves adjustment, you make your adjustment, and then you would simply have taken the brush and you either paint black or white in here. So I'm gonna hit Command I to invert it. It's gonna make the black mask, all right? And then basically we would come in here and paint white, make that adjustment happen in that specific location. So now it's a little bit different and it's gonna make it easier for people who are learning. So you can come on over here. This is the adjustment brush. It's this little brush with this little moon that's half white, half dark, okay? Yours is probably gonna be a different spot. I don't know where the default one was. I haven't tried it. This is a custom toolbar. This is where I put it. I made it so it's simple. When I click this little link, the contextual taskbar down here on the bottom changes. And up here, we have the same options, basically. And we have two different ways to do basically the same thing, because you know Adobe loves to have multiple ways to do the same thing. So let's say I wanted to do that curves adjustment. So we have this drop down menu. I can pick anything I want. I can pick curves. And then all I have to do is start painting where I want the curves to happen, okay? It automatically knows to paint white into the mask. It has a default adjustment it looks like. So I can change that adjustment anytime. And boom, just like that, I've made my adjustment. Now the cool thing about this is, now I have this adjustment and this mask, but let's say I don't wanna use curves, I wanted to use levels. I don't know why anybody would do that. But if you come up here to the adjustment here on the top and you go to levels, for some reason it doesn't switch and change it over here. But if you go down here to the contextual taskbar and you change from curves to levels, you'll notice, boom, it changed it into levels over here. So now we can make the adjustment in levels. We've still got the mask that didn't remove that. And you can kind of change on the fly. If we want to do a new adjustment, we can come down here. You can see that there's a new adjustment. So I can click, oh, hey, I want to do a new adjustment. What's that new adjustment? Well, I want to make this image black and white. So I'll click on black and white. It's automatically giving me a black mask. It's cool, I like that. I'm gonna find that helpful. And then wherever I wanna make something black and white, I can just simply start to paint and apply that to that location because we've got that set up. Now, up here, we've got a 
subtract and plus. So if you wanted to remove, you can click the minus. It's basically just painting black into your mask, which is exactly the way it was in the old version. And to prove that, I'll hit Command Z times to undo it. I can come down here. I've got my color as black. I can simply remove that, all right? So it's doing the same thing as we did it in the old way. It's just making a little bit more intuitive and helpful. So we'll click back here. So we've got plus, so we can add that back and I can make that black and white. This is our brush size. This right here is pressure if you're using a pen. So if we wanna see the overlay of where we're doing it, we can click on that. That can be helpful, your opacity and your flow. And then down here, we have the same options. And look, as you're doing this, the options in the contextual taskbar will change. So if I wanted to pick an object, I can apply to an object. I can select that object, which is basically the girl in the purse. We'll let it do its little thing where it makes a selection. Boom, just like that, it applied it to that area where I told it to make that adjustment to, and it's put it in that mask. And that's what's new inside of Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Camera Raw, and Adobe Lightroom. If you found this video helpful and could give us a thumbs up, that would be great. If you have any comments or questions, you can put those below, and don't forget to subscribe.